Okay, welcome back. Thanks for tuning in. And this videotape, this uh, segment is going to be, uh, you've passed someone's guard, you have side mount. And I'm gonna talk about control positions to maintain while you have side mount because there is nothing, there's nothing worse than getting into someone's guard, you have tremendous difficulty on crossing the ankles, you're battling, you finally pass the guard, you're in side mount, you're happy, now you can start working attacks. What does the person do? They either bridge and roll you, now you're on the back, start all over again, or worse yet, they replace you to guard and then you have to start all over again. Nothing more frustrating than that. So this video is going to be, I'm in side control finally, how to apply pressure, maintain some good control positions, and then work my game on attack and staying on top. I hope that helps you out. Check it out. Big John. I have six fundamental control positions for mount, which happens to be part of the blue belt curriculum as well. But these six fundamental positions, first of all, the first four, I just want to talk about the arm positions. And again, I highly recommend that you uh, rewind this video, watch it again, play it back to understand the arm positions. I'm just going to explain this once. So on control position number one, both hands will be across the body. On control position number two, is one hand maintains across the body and I underhook the head. Control position number three will be now my opposite of number two. And control position number four will be opposite of number one. So this is number four. Both hands on my side of this body when you're inside and out. So getting back to control position number one, I have both hands across the body. I want to take the hand that's closest to his hip, this arm here, and I want to grab the shoulder, bring him up towards me, and grab a hold of the spine. Now, I put the weight on my partner, and I keep this knee at the hip, and this elbow pinching his hip together. My other knee now can move body weight off the mat and onto him to create good control position with lots of weight and pressure. I from here it's pretty good. I can pressure both of my knees into my elbows, but if I want to add a bit more weight, I just straighten out this leg and create a bit more weight. Control position number two. See, the trick in regards to pressure is always having an arm at the spine ideally. So this hand is not at the spine, but in regards to control position number two, I need to take the hand at the spine, grab the shoulder, and I switch, this one's at the spine, now this one comes over, I pressure this, pressure the shoulder, and that same leg straightens out. That's pressure. Number three is going to be, whatever hand is at the spine, I grab the shoulder, I bring him towards me, I grab the spine, and now this hand checks the thigh. The inside forearm checks the thigh, Put the weight back on him, and now it's the hand, the leg, this leg at his hip, to straighten out and apply pressure. It's important to always have an arm or a knee at his hip. I do not want to have the hand on the side and the leg straight to shrink away from the guard. No, shrink away. This is what you're trying to avoid. So if the hand on this side, I need to have a knee at the hip. Unless I have this hand here, then I can straighten out the leg here. So now I'm in control position number three. Control position number four is no hand in the spine, unfortunately. So now it's both hands on this side, and I apply pressure at the neck and the shoulder at the chin. Both knees off the mat and weight on the hand. It's pressure, but not as much pressure. I'm not the side. Let me review one through four briefly, and then I'll work five and six into that. So number one, to grab the shoulder, spine, come over here. I need to straighten out this leg, because if I straighten out this leg, I'm open to be replaced to guard. So I need this knee at the hip, elbow at the hip. 
So then I just straighten up this leg and apply pressure. Control position number two is to take the hand of the spine on the shoulder. This hand up grabs the spine, underhook, shoulder here, and again, straighten out. Number three is the hand of the spine, I grab the shoulder, the other hand grabs the spine, I check at the hip, and then I can straighten out this leg, and I'm in good control position. Number four is come underneath, just like number two, I pressure and then shoulder, and then I keep the weight on it. That's one through four. Let me explain number five. Number five can be done from either number two or number one. So I'm in number one position and I have avoided his elbow to get at my hip. Now all of a sudden, go ahead, go ahead, John. He works his elbow. This is what I want to avoid. So one more time. Go ahead. As he's doing this, I'm just going to switch my hips. Now my control position in the arm. And if I want to maintain and eliminate this arm, I have just done so. If I want to go back where I came from, I drag my knee in the mat till I hit, then I come over, and then guess what? I've removed his arm once again. That was number five. Number six, and come on the other side. Number six is when he shrinks away by his knee in, boy, you knee in, but this is what I want to avoid. So when he does this, I'll let him away, he brings the knee, now I go to number six. Number six is a shrimp. So I turn my hips the other way. This knee, go up here, go. Once again, this could be viewed as a little bit dry material, but when you don't know how to hold side mount properly and you lose position and you're not available to have your, to impose your game, and either he bridges the roll you and now you're on your back, or you're in someone else's guard, you may not view this as dry material anymore. So I highly recommend to rep this out, get comfortable with it, learn how to transition from different control positions from one to the next, with it. I hope that helps you out and I look forward to seeing you in the next soon.